Is Hassan Reddick a Falcon? I don't know, Jim. He might be. So we're going to unpack the latest smoke surrounding Hassan Reddick potentially coming to Atlanta. And I'll tell you why I got a question mark, and I'm not going to put the PD stamp of Falcon approval on it in just a second here. But I was looking at our subscribers so far in the month of March, and we are yet again skull-fucking Saints now in subscribers. Nearly 2 x in them. Let's make it 3x. Help us beat Saints now and put them in the dirt when it comes to subscribers in the month of March. Now, Jeremy Fowler hopped on ESPN Sports Center earlier and talked about the Hassan Reddick trade rumors. Here's what he said. The expectation league-wide is that he is moved at some point. The Eagles went and spent on Bryce Huff. They re-signed Josh Sweat, so they have their two pass rushers. Reddick appears to be the odd man out. He does want a new deal, but this is a premier guy that should have value. He wants a new contract plus the draft capital that it's going to, uh, going to take to get him. Arizona could be a team to watch because Jonathan Gannon was with him two years ago in Philly. They had good production together. Arizona needs pass rushers. Atlanta, to an extent, so there should be teams in the mix. I think both teams here make a lot of sense, and honestly, I think it probably makes a little bit more sense for the Cardinals than the Falcons in some ways, which is why I can't quite say he's a Falcon, because as Jeremy Fowler pointed out, like you've got the Jonathan Gannon connection, right? His old DC in Philly, now the head coach in Arizona. They've got money to spend. They're looking to revamp their pass rushing unit. If they don't feel like this is a win now, not even a win now, but a competitive mode for them, then it doesn't make a ton of sense for them to give up draft capital for a 29-year-old edge rusher and give out a big contract when you could probably just use that draft pick on a pass rusher, hope you get similar production for one-tenth of the cost. Whereas Atlanta is very much in a win-now mode, and they are probably much more open to moving on from a draft pick to go get a more surefire thing then rolling the dice at the NFL draft table, which is a craps table, and hoping you don't bust. Now, Hassan Reddick, over the last four years, I don't think I need to persuade anyone on going to get him. When it comes to Hassan Reddick being a good football player, like the guy's got four straight seasons of 11 or more sacks, and he's done it in a variety of systems and spots from Arizona to Carolina to Philly. So it's not like it's just been a one-trick pony with the Eagles. He's had success in numerous stops in his career ever since someone finally came to their senses and used him as an outside linebacker. Now, his PFF grades from last year, 43rd of 112 qualifying edge rushers. We're talking about a top third defensive end outside linebacker edge rusher. And that is much higher than anyone on the Falcons' current roster right now. Overall grade, a 75.2. So I think we can all agree, Hassan Reddick is a good football player, right? So the question then becomes, is he worth the draft picks? Maybe worth, uh, is he worth the draft picks that it'll cost to give up? And a contract extension. And I think those two things are very important to keep in mind. So let's talk about the draft picks, right? What it would cost to get Hassan Reddick. I think the best point of reference would be the Brian Burns trade, where he went to the Giants for a second and a fifth-round pick swap. I think Brian Burns has a higher value than Hassan Reddick does right now. Okay, He's younger. He was more pursued the last few seasons. I think if you poll GMs right now, who would you rather have, Burns or Reddick? Of the 32, I think you might get a clean sweep of, we'd rather have Brian Burns. So if he went for basically a second, we'll say, I think you'd get Hassan Reddick for a third, which Atlanta has two of because of the Calvin Ridley trade. And this isn't even the better of their two third-round picks. The other one is the 75th overall, 74th, one of those two I can't quite remember. So very uh, minimal difference between the two anyway. But for the Eagles, they get a day-two draft pick for an odd man out edge rusher that wants an extension, that's entering the final year of their contract that doesn't seem to have, for whatever reason, and I don't really understand why, a good footing in a spot with Philly after yet another really good season for the Eagles. So I don't have a good explanation as to why Philly isn't trying to milk out the last year of Hassan Reddick's contract. Like, if you go back to the origin of the trade rumors, the Eagles kind of leaked Reddick wants a trade. 
when Reddick came out and said, I don't want to be traded. I want to stay here. I'm from Philly. I went to Temple. I had a great four years there. Like, I don't want to leave, but I want a new deal. And then the Eagles were like, well, we don't want to give you a new deal, so we're going to trade you. I don't know why you wouldn't. Like, he's a really good, productive football player still for your team. So that's a conversation for Eagles fans to have. But would you do this trade? Deal or no deal time, baby? Accept or decline? I know it's a lot more fun to say no deal on the show, but not in this show. In this show, we take the deal, baby. If I were Terry Fontenot and Raheem Morris and this was an offer that Howie Roseman phoned in, I would trade a third for Hassan Reddick in a heartbeat. I mean, really think about what Atlanta is striving for in 2024. It is not to just try and maybe flirt with the playoffs. It is to go out and win playoff games. Something Hassan Reddick has experience doing, right? Help the Eagles get all the way to the Super Bowl. So for me, it's a no-brainer if that is on the table. And I'm going to tell you more about that in just a second. But first, I want to fill you all in on our wonderful sponsor today, which is Prize Picks, Daily Fantasy Made Easy. The way Prize Picks works is you just select two to six players and then choose more or less on their projected stats. Now, what does that mean in English? Well, basically, you go on Prize Picks, you pick whatever sport you want NBA, NHL, college basketball right now and then choose more or less on those projected stats like we just mentioned. So I'm taking the more on whatever that guy's name is from Ames, Iowa. Also, like the more on my, on my man Dalton Connect from Tennessee. And then I like the less on Marcus out of Illinois. So if you like these selections or if you just want to have some bonus fun while watching March Madness and other action on the hardwood from the NBA to the NHL to MLB coming up now, download the Prize Picks app and use code CLNS for a first-time deposit match up to $100. I put that link, by the way, in the comments and description of today's video. Prize picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Now, if you are on the fence about trading a third for Redick, let me bring you to my side of the fence. Let's look and see what kind of players the Falcons have gotten with their third-round picks lately. Still way too early to grade Zach Harrison as a player. Desmond Ritter, I think we can say is like an F, right? Just a failure. D'Angelo Malone's an F. Jalen Mayfield is an F. Matt Hennessy, not an F, but a C. He was supposed to be the starter until he got hurt. That last guy's an F. Don't even remember him anymore. Like, it's not like Atlanta. And I understand it's not the same crew picking now that it was in 2018 and whatnot, but like, the Falcons don't have this great history of finding hidden gems in the draft, and that's why they don't want to give up their draft picks. You've got a proven player in Hassan Reddick. So full send on using a third. Like if Hassan Reddick entered this draft and he was on the board with that third round pick, would you want them to take them? Would you want them to take Hassan Reddick or some rookie? You'd be begging for Reddick. So just use your third round pick on him right now. Now, it is a two-fold trade, right? You got to give up something for him. And then you got to give Hassan Reddick something because He's going to want a new contract, and trading for a disgruntled player is not going to lead to a great result. And if you're going to use a third rounder on him, you would probably want more than just a quick rental. So I think for a 29-year-old edge rusher coming off another 10-plus sack season, three-year, $50 million contract, his last one was three years, $45 million. He's outperformed it, so a $5 million pay increase. You guarantee a little over half of it, so it's kind of like a two-year, $30 million contract which is an average of $15 million, and that's not even close to top 10 highest paid edge rushers. So I think it's a win-win for both sides. Reddick gets a multi-year deal as he goes towards 30. He gets 30 Gs guaranteed, and Atlanta is paying $16.6 million for one of the better edge rushers in football. You look at the front five right now for the Falcons, unless they make some more additions or they bring back Campbell or Dupree, it's not like there's a great crop of pass rushers on the open market. And Lorenzo Carter, he wasn't even a starter last season. He's going to graduate to being a starter on this team just because Bud Dupree was not re-signed? What does that say to the rest of your roster? Okay. Arnold Ebicady, I think, played some good football, and he's a good rotational piece. But him and Carter as your you know, heat-seeking missiles for quarterbacks – this team's going to take a big step backwards defensively if that's the case. So when you look at the you know current pass rush leaders on this team with no Campbell and no Dupree re-signing, you've got guys that combine for, what's that, 12, 16 sacks? 
Reddick had 11 last year. These four combined for a little bit more than that. Come on, go get Hassan Reddick. Pay Hassan Reddick, and then I still think you could double dip with Dallas Turner. If you are a little concerned about still not having that youth potential at the pass rushing position, no one's stopping you from getting Hassan Reddick, getting Dallas Turner, and all of a sudden Lorenzo Carter is in a much better role as the fourth pass rusher instead of the second, and Ebikadi is still the third pass rusher on this team from the outside linebacker position, right? Go get Dallas Turner and really sink your teeth into we are going to overcorrect our pass rushing woes from the last, I don't know, decades of this franchise. We're going to go out and get Hassan Reddick, and then we're going to go to the draft and get the best pass rushing player to go along with it because F it, why not? So what do you think the eighth overall pick should be used on? Wide receiver or edge? I've been very open to both. I've kind of been a whore when it comes to the eighth overall pick. Like I can be persuaded into anyone's bed for the most part. But if I'm looking at the PD's big board right now, I'm still favoring Roma Junze or Malik Neighbors. But I'm not going to be you know, having a pity party if they go get Dallas Turner at eight. There's also a very real possibility, I mean, the Chargers go Malik Neighbors, and the Giants go Roma Dunze. So you definitely have to have a good backup plan in place, even if those are your top two guys. So if you can walk away with Hassan Reddick and a top eight player from this year's draft, yeah, that is something I can get very on board with. So with that being said, we will sign off on today's show. If you enjoyed this edition of Falcons today, consider subscribing down below, and we will see you, all, see you guys later.